Um, I will now welcome our next speakers. Uh, joining us today, this afternoon, we have Trevor Dauphine and Anne Bermont. Um, they will be telling us about driving investment and creating smart cities. Uh, Trevor Dauphine has almost 25 years of progressive experience in both the private and public sectors. Currently, Trevor is the inaugural Chief Executive Officer of Invest Ontario, the province's investment attraction agency. Invest, Ontario's, uh, Invest Ontario plays a key role in the government's efforts to secure strategic investments in the manufacturing, technology, and life sciences sectors. Previously, Trevor held executive leadership roles within the Ontario Public Service, including the ministries responsible for economic development, budgeting, and infrastructure. Trevor's private sector experience includes more than a decade of automotive, chemical, and consulting sectors, including extensive sales and account management. Um, Anne Bermont is the Assistant Deputy Minister, Innovation, Scale-Up, and Regional Economic Development division. This division is responsible for supporting small business growth, strengthening Ontario's innovation, innovation ecosystem in partnership with Ontario's regional innovation centers and the Ontario Centre of Innovation, and maintaining productive relationships with Ontario-based companies in ICT and life sciences. Welcome Trevor and Anne, and I'm turning the mic over to you. Um, I'm delighted to be here, so thank you so much. So. Um, today, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover at a very high level what my division does with respect to how we work uh, and how we support the, um, you know, the launching and the scaling of technology companies here in Ontario and also some of the other relationships that we have with some of the larger, more established multinational companies that, that you know, uh, make on, you know, have a footprint here in the province. So let me just see if I, yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah, so just at a very high level. So uh, my division, ha you know, builds strategic relationships and partnerships with leading companies and industry associations in the technology and life sciences sector. And essentially what we, why we do what we do is around um, generating job growth, you know, attracting investment and, um, of course, creating a supply and a pipeline of uh, technologies in Ontario. And we also work on, we, uh, we develop and we deliver a number of programs that help companies navigate um, the, um, you know, the, you know, what we call the, the kind of the valley, valley of death with respect to, you know, when they start, when they scale, you know, there are challenges to, to kind of, you know, um, uh, traversing that um, very challenging, um, you know, point in the development of any company's evolution. And so, um, so as I said, you know, we've got programs and services that I'll, I'll describe to you shortly. Um, and, um, and we work with uh, some really key partners uh, in the province, um, the regional innovation centers and also the Ontario Center of Innovation and also the Vector Institute. So again, I'll sort of, you know, dive into those just a little bit, not a lot, because I know we don't have a lot of time today. And then there's another area within my division that does mostly policy work. So we, we basically look at the province uh, from an economic development perspective, and we look at policies and where we can bring in partners uh, across the, uh, the government of Ontario to address some of the challenges that we have in the regions in the province, because... It's a very large province and, you know, each region has its own opportunities and it has its own challenges. So the, the solutions um, will, you know, have to be, you know, a little bit bespoke, you know, to, to try and address some of the issues in those, uh, in those particular regions. So just level setting here, um, you know, so this slide talks about Ontario's IT industry by the numbers. So um, very, very, you know, formidable sector. Um, you know, Ontario has over 320,000 IT workers across the province, uh, but most of them are clustered in the GTA, Ottawa, and the Waterloo regions. And we have 25,000 uh, companies, uh, which really, which positions Ontario second in North America after California. And we graduate um, 64,000 STEM graduates every year. So our universities and colleges are very well respected and they provide a stream of high quality talent sought by a lot of companies and by investors. And the University of Toronto ranks amongst the top 20 global universities and the University of Waterloo graduates are 
very, uh, you know, uh, high in demand, especially from uh, companies that are in the Silicon Valley. Now, this presents both an opportunity and a challenge for Ontario. So um, the high demand for Ontario graduates, you know, um, is fabulous for those graduates because they can find uh, jobs quite easily. And certainly if they move to the United States, they can find very well paying jobs in the United States, but it does pose a challenge, even though, you know, I know that, you know, with the, the change in the economy, there are, you know, and certainly this is, you know, quite topical in the papers about a number of companies laying off tech workers, but those tech workers tend to find jobs rather quickly. So the demand is, is certainly there. And so that's our struggle is how do we, as we are graduating these highly skilled tech workers, how do we in Ontario, um, you know, retain them? And then, you know, how do we also, is there an opportunity for us to attract them back, you know, if they've left, um, especially if they've gone uh, south of, of the border? So um, I also wanted to just uh, say that the Ontario's ICT industry is segmented into hardware, software, and services sector. So the hardware includes devices, communication equipment, and components. Software includes uh, end user applications, middleware, and systems. And services includes operations, professional services, and connectivity, which I think you just heard about from uh, the CRTC. Um, so. Um, Moving on, I, I wanted to quickly touch on um, Ontario's innovation ecosystem strengths. So, uh, you know, we have a vibrant and growing technology sector, our technology cluster. The Toronto region is the fastest growing cluster in North America, adding about 89,000 um, jobs each uh, of tech workers over the past five years. So between 2016 and 2021, we have an incredibly strong research and development ecosystem. Ontario businesses spend more on R&D than any other uh, provinces. Um, similarly, Ontario universities spend the most on R&D in all provinces. However, you'll hear the other side of that point when I start talking about some of our challenges. Uh, we also have an incredibly strong venture funding environment. Um, in 2021, Ontario was fourth leading jurisdiction in North America with over $8.4 billion raised. And this puts us ahead of Texas and other Canadian provinces. And with respect to startup and scaling companies, uh, we're home to over 50% of Canada's fastest growing technology companies. In 2021, Ontario created eight new unicorns. So unicorns are you know, companies valued at $1 billion plus. And this brings our total in Ontario to 17. And it's really interesting to note that we had none in 2019. So quite a lot has happened in the past three years. And then here we go uh, in terms of some of the challenges. Um, you know, we struggle to adopt uh, new technology. So even though we've had an incredible success in developing a supply of uh, technology, um, especially in artificial intelligence, uh, cybersecurity, blockchain. Uh, we face issues uh, with um, our, you know, our own companies and our sectors and our, our industries actually uh, adopting uh, the technologies. And certainly this was really evident uh, during COVID, uh, not so much in the, in the industry, well, uh, where, we, we, where, where we saw it hit most um, uh, dramatically, of course, was in the retail sector. So what we call our main streets. And a number of those businesses actually had to figure out how they could get their, their services online. Otherwise, their doors would have been shut for, you know, for quite a, an extended period of time. Um, we do lag other jurisdictions with respect to patent filings. And uh, in the past two years, the government of Ontario has put uh, a large emphasis on um, IP uh, generation, protection and commercialization. Um, and one of uh, a new agency um, that we've uh, created uh, that was just um, formally launched uh, just this fall is called IP Ontario. And IP Ontario focuses on building capacity here in Ontario by providing uh, companies or what we call SME, small and medium sized enterprises with access to funding. And so that, you know, through the funding, I mean, a lot of these startup companies have you know, a really difficult decision to make. Um, you know, do I spend, you know, the money that I've just raised um, hiring, uh, you know, a, a software engineer or, you know, um, 
you know, some new staff or do I, you know, use it to pay for legal advice to put in place an IP strategy? So we're hoping that, you know, you know, those companies won't find themselves in that predicament because both are necessary. And so um, IP Ontario, or what we call IPON, uh, will provide companies with access to vouchers to allow them to access legal advice with respect to how do they protect um, their IP, um, their trade secrets, uh, as well as, you know, how do they put in place um, uh, IP strategies. And they'll also provide access to um, learnings and curricula as well. And they're, uh, so it's, as I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's an agency. It's, it's very, very new. It's uh, just launched with respect to the IP vouchers. It uh, launched uh, vouchers focusing on med tech uh, back in September. And in fact, last Friday, they just, clo uh, they just uh, launched the, the new round focused on auto. And then the next round, which will happen in early 2023, will focus on artificial intelligence. So the other is that our business expenditure on R&D has declined over two decades. So even though you know it, it's a strength, like so Ontario relative to other parts of Canada does well in that respect. Um, however, you know uh, if you compare us to other OECD countries, we do uh, we do lag. Uh, uh, quite a lot. Again, productivity, uh, we lag OECD countries, including the US, the UK, and also, I would say some, if you you know were to look at it subnational to subnational, like we, we lag states like Indiana and Kentucky. So, you know, there's, there's a, a real opportunity, especially using some of the critical technologies that we're developing here in the province to maybe address some of those productivity challenges. And despite our strong you know, venture capital ecosystem, Ontario is still far behind the Valley, Boston, and, and New York. So um, on this one, this just kind of gives you uh, an idea of who our partners are, who we work with. So uh, we work with, uh, there are 17 regional innovation centers, and they all, they're located all across the province, including, uh, we've got about four of them in Northern Ontario, North Bay, in Sudbury, in Sault Ste. Marie, and in Thunder Bay. Uh, and then the other, the other ones are, the other 13 are spread in uh, across Southern Ontario. Um, what they do is they provide entrepreneurship um, uh, or entrepreneurs with uh, advice, with mentoring, with uh, you know, helping them navigate the innovation ecosystem. They provide them with uh, HR advice, with business advice. So they're like your your first, you know, if you're an entrepreneur looking at, you know, starting your business, you know, you, you that's where we would direct you first is to start working with the local regional innovation center. And they also, some of them do specialize. So some of them, you know, have uh, specialties where they focus on, you know, med tech, you know, fintech, uh, ed tech, uh, autos. And so depending on, or mining, like, you know, uh, NORCAT, for example. So, you know, depending on where you start, like you could start in one regional innovation center, but as your company starts to scale and as you start to understand what your needs are, you may find yourself moving around the innovation ecosystem to um, another RIC or a couple of other RICs, because again, because they, they do have specializations. We, we actually launched um, earlier this year um, uh, an online tool called Innovate On, and that is designed to um, expedite the journey for entrepreneurs from launch to scaling. And it sort of, you know, gives them an opportunity to quickly understand what their needs are, and then to be able to quickly identify where they can find those resources within the RIC um, ecosystem. So another, you know, partner that we work with very, very closely is the Ontario Center of Innovation. Their focus is on you know, tech, tech acceleration, tech adoption, and talent development with respect to new technologies. And they're a key partner of ours. Uh, so they deliver a number of flagship projects or programs rather for the province of Ontario. Uh, one of the largest ones is OVIN, uh, the Ontario Vehicle Innovation Network, which focuses on building capacity and helping working with uh, small and medium sized enterprises focused on EV and AV. Um, the other um, uh, large program that they're going to be delivering for us um, with respect to life sciences is they're going to be launching the Life Sciences Innovation Fund. So I'll touch on that a little bit later. 
And then we also work very closely with uh, Vector, and I think I've uh, already spoken to you about um, IPON, and then um, I'll get into the other uh, organizations in the next slides. So um, with respect to access to capital, um, this is basically the fuel that helps companies sort of you know, uh, go from, you know, you know, grow or scale. Um, the ministry, we work very closely to ensure that uh, the province has a strong and vibrant venture capital ecosystem so that uh, companies can access startup and growth capital when needed. And um, research, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it basically identifies that in comparison to non-venture capital backed back firms, VC firms experience higher sales growth, higher employment growth, higher wage growth, higher survival rates, and access to public markets a lot faster. So a number of the ministry's initiatives have been very successful and are now actually self-sufficient with respect to recycling proceeds back into the market to support the next generation of uh, Ontario companies. So for example, um, out of Mars, the IEF is the Investment Accelerator Fund. That fund's been in place since about 2009 and currently supports over 150 companies. But over a period of about 13 years, it has returned quite a number of proceeds, and those proceeds have been reinvested back into that fund. And in fact, $25 million of those proceeds were used to create a private sector-led fund called Graphite Ventures. Similarly, Venture Ontario is the ministry's uh, venture capital agency. And again, um, you know, it was set up in 2008. And since then, it's actually generated over $300 million in proceeds. And those proceeds have gone and have been reinvested and have created the Venture Ontario Fund. Um, so let me just... Well, exactly. That's exactly right. I was just going to say that um, that um, they've invested in companies like Echo B, Shopify, and Wattpad. So, so those are some of the the larger successes coming out of Venture Ontario. So, what this does is it just kind of gives you um, uh, the continuum of where and you know these funds play with respect to where the companies are in their in their scaling um, um, you know their scaling journey. So you know, at the very uh, early stage, pre-seed angel investment, um, there's the Ontario Centre of Innovations Ready for Market. This is a co-investment fund of up to about 350,000. And then the brand new one that came out of our life sciences sector strategy is the Life Sciences Innovation Fund. So it's a co-investment fund of about $500,000. And then as you move along, you know, um, the you know from pre-seed to the growth stage. There's the Investment Accelerator Fund, and then the Graphite Ventures, which also includes OMERS as a private sector partner. And then you have Venture Ontario, which um, is now has now moved into, into growth capital. So that just kind of gives you a sense of where these funds um, support in terms of where the, companies, uh, where the company is in its uh, scaling journey. And then this uh, gives you just an idea of some of the companies, and I, I think you'll recognize quite a number of them, some of the companies that have been supported through a number of the various programs that we offer um, uh, through the ministry or through some of our partners like the, the Regional Innovation Centers, Ontario Center of Innovation, um, Vector as well is, is another one. Um, and, and then because of the Smart Cities theme of this conference, I just wanted to pull out some of the companies that um, are, uh, you know, focusing, um, they have their technologies that, that enable uh, smart city solutions. So there's ThoughtWire, uh, Peak Power, uh, Agle, Smart One, Geotab, Myovision, Acopia, and Gaddix. So just to give you a sense of, you know, some of the companies that we have funded through our various programs that are focused on smart city solutions. And then uh, finally, what I wanted to do is just end on, you know, uh, in addition to, you know, um, this sort of um, foundational, all these foundational pieces that we have in place, you know, we're also accelerating growth through critical technologies. And what I mean by critical technologies are, you know, artificial intelligence and 5G connectivity. So I heard things about lag time and broadband speed. So, you know, 5G is also an enabler of uh, Internet of Things and smart cities, so is artificial intelligence. We're also going to be focusing on robotics, cybersecurity, quantum, and blockchain. And 
All of these build on uh, previous investments that we made into 5G through, uh, again, through the Ontario Centre of Innovation, through a program called Encore, and also on next generation networks through uh, Sengen, which is a not-for-profit based in, in Ottawa. And that started to help us build capacity here in Ontario with respect to um, the infrastructure, the 5G testbed, the infrastructure, but also I think really, really important is starting to build the, the, the talent and the companies that are going to be using you know, these technologies to help to um, accelerate uh, our growth and to address some of those challenges that I identified in a previous slide related to, to productivity. So that's where we're going. Uh, we're actually going to be making an announcement. Um, well, not an announcement, but we'll, we'll, we'll have some more information about how we're going to move forward with the critical technologies uh, initiatives um, later this week. So it's 107 million over three years. That was identified in the 2022 budget. So that's it for me. So I'm delighted to turn it over to my colleague, Trevor Daphne. Thanks, Anne. Uh, special thanks to uh, Katerina for the invitation and to Denton. Um, you know, I think Anne's done a great job sort of setting us up a little bit around the ecosystem. What is the feeder, the scaling companies in Ontario and what the province is doing to support technologies. I'm going to talk a little bit about my agency, Invest Ontario, what our mandate is, and uh, sort of what our next steps are. So, you know, Invest Ontario is a relatively newly created provincial agency. Um, you know, our, the, the agency was created to really raise the bar around investment attraction. So when I say investment attraction, I really mean foreign direct investment, direct greenfield investment, as well as companies here uh, looking to make sort of a strategic or, or light sort of change in terms of their investment profile in the province with the ultimate goal of trying to create jobs and create investment and, and create sustainability in terms of the economics of the province. And so, you know, I would say historically, um, you know, we've sort of, there's a number of other jurisdictions around the world that are really raising the bar around courting companies to come and invest in their respective jurisdictions. And so Invest Ontario was a direct response to that around raising our game from an investment attraction perspective. You know, we went out, we talked to business leaders and there were some consistent themes and engaging with the government and making decisions around big investments takes too long. Approvals take too long. Government departments are incredibly difficult to navigate. Um, there's unstable funding and programming. It comes in drips and drabs or is not stable in terms of how we engage. And there's uncoordinated collaboration between the federal government, the provinces and the municipalities. And so, the reality is that we need to come together in a more effective way to work with business partners around generating investment in the province. So, you know, what we're really about is focusing on what I call strategic investments. You know, Anne's team and the ministry and the province are very focused on creating an ecosystem around growth, especially for our domestic companies. Uh, you know, my job is to find those strategic big investments that are game changing for the province and bring them to, uh, to Ontario or have them grow who are already here. The intent is really to provide a one window approach for potential investors looking to come here and also to think about this from a regional inclusivity perspective. So the reality is we look at things from uh, a broad space and a lot of investment has come to the province, uh, city of Toronto and the GTA. There are other regions that probably haven't benefited as much. And frankly, with COVID and the change in the work life structure, there's a lot of opportunities for us to think maybe about and drawing investment into other parts of the province. And so regional inclusivity is an important part of our mandate from our perspective. You know, really what we're trying to do is one, create a single point of contact for these investors. And to be clear, I'm really focused on three sectors. I've neglected to mention this. So one of them is manufacturing, one of them is life sciences, and the other is the technology space. And so, yes, you know, lots of questions around that because those are very broad, they overlap. You know, when we think about med tech, when we think about manufacturing, is that technology, et cetera. But the reality is those are broad scopes. We're thinking about how to narrow that focus in terms of the mandate of the agency, but basically we're supposed to be working with these strategic investments to come to the province. So one, a strategic single point of contact, uh, create credible and knowledgeable interface. So, you know, I'm about 30 staff currently, we're growing to 50. The, about half of them come from the private sector. They have a private sector functional mentality. They understand how to speak the language of business. We're recruit from the technology sector to engage with sort of technology executives. And that's the intent is to act as that bridge between the private sector and the public sector when we're thinking about investment. 
The other thing is to think about speed of operations. How do we work quickly to help an investor make a decision on coming to the province or other ways? And then lastly, we bring competitive incentives when appropriate. So you know, whether that's financial or whether there are other non-financial supports. You know, Anne touched on many of the kind of programmatic solutions we have in the technology space, but we also have other things to help companies grow. So for example, there's a number of programs around talent, around growing and hiring people. And so we can act as an interface for those investors looking to grow their, grow their presence here in the province. So, you know, Anne talked a lot about, she set the, the great landscape up front. Um, you know, I think we can obviously point to a laundry list of very large companies in the space here. Many of these are multinationals, but there's obviously Ontario based companies here. Um, they, over the last four years, there's been a light step change in terms of growth of talent in the province and of attracting these types of anchor investments. And I would say, notwithstanding the sort of retrenchment we're seeing in the markets right now in the tech space, these represent sort of a number of companies that have recognized the value proposition of the province. And to be frank, the value proposition is talent, right? So we've got a highly competitive talent environment right now. A lot of companies are interested in coming to the province. There's a lot of competition amongst existing firms, but it still represents a really compelling value proposition for these companies. I think partly what we tried to do is to say, what's the, what's the you know, if, if you want the government's help to come here, for example, as a, as a foreign company, what's the value proposition you bring to the companies that are already here, the Ontario-based firms, the smaller companies? How do we enclose that? How do we have that interface so that there's a value proposition where they get not only help from the government to grow here and set up, but also help with the companies that are here from a network effect perspective? And then, you know, there's also a lot of discussion around intellectual property and always at the back of our mind is like, how do we create in the intangible economy the value and keep it here in Ontario, right? And so part of the construct as always is understanding that as we think about helping companies, how do we keep that, how do we keep that intangible piece of the economy here and grow the right kinds of jobs? We don't want to just be a low cost competitor in terms of, I got cheap tech talent here with the exchange on the dollar. That's not a sustainable model. It's all about value creation for the province and for businesses in the province. Um, there was a bit of discussion at the overarching piece in terms of where we are from an all up perspective in terms of the ecosystem. You know, we typically talk about the three hubs, you know, Ottawa, Toronto, and uh, Kitchener, Waterloo. You know, Ottawa's got the legacy of Nortel. Uh, there's large hardware components. You've got Toronto across the spectrum of software engagement. And then of course, Kitchener, Waterloo, again, the legacy of BlackBerry and, and what fell from that in terms of the, the sector. But there are a lot of other regions in the province that have a game to play in terms of technology. Places like Thunder Bay, places like Waterloo, uh, sorry, Windsor, I should say, uh, or London, Ontario, all have sort of burgeoning tech uh, sort of ecosystems. So I say this as sort of our anchor parts of the province uh, from our perspective, but recognizing that I think, again, coming out of COVID, you've got companies that are looking for talent and they're looking to not just come to the urban centers, that's part of the sort of thought process, but they're also saying, you know what, I'm thinking about hiring somebody in Thunder Bay to do a, even though I'm physically located in somewhere else. And I think that represents a lot of opportunities for us as we think about the investment attraction space and bringing these companies to the province. So I'm gonna talk just maybe a couple minutes about Nokia. Uh, so, you know, one of the investments that the agency did was a, it worked with uh, Nokia, which is a legacy, obviously, of Nortel was uh, bought up Alcatel and then subsequently was acquired by Nokia. There's a campus in Ottawa that employs about 2000 people and they do extensive R&D research uh, in 5G, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cybersecurity, all these things. And I think this was the one of our key projects that the agency has sort of supported. We provided them a $40 million loan in order to secure a $340 million investment basically anchoring Canada in terms of the future of telecommunications. And it was an incredibly important kind of project for us because it was the first one in the technology spectrum that the agency did. But the intent behind it, again, is to come up with a way to cluster to anchor those types of jobs so that you get the benefits and the spinoffs for the community. You know, Ontario's kind of got this really unique value proposition. And so, you know, Anne touched on cybersecurity and the autonomous vehicle space. I mean. It's just a really diverse economy. You've got, we're the second largest auto producer in North America, 2 million cars. We have the second largest tech cluster if you count it by number of businesses. And you've got the banking headquarters here. You've got uh, all these different elements of the economy that come together and converge in a really interesting way. So suddenly when I start talking about why is autonomous vehicles special? Well, everybody has a tech sector. 
Some jurisdictions have an auto sector. Nobody has both. Some sectors have a technology sector and they have a banking sector, but it's very rare to have both. So what does that mean? FinTech, cybersecurity. And it's kind of a really interesting opportunity that presents us that's unique to Ontario versus other jurisdictions. So again, just circling back to Nokia, this was an incredibly uh, um, successful project from our perspective. It created this anchor uh, and uh, really sort of was a great signal to put out to the market around the kinds of projects that the agency and the province is interested in securing along that continuum. And talked a lot about the beginning, I'm further up, right? Now, my next slide is, I, this is kind of a throw-in. So I know there's a few developers here. Uh, there's, Dentons has a really strong practice in, uh, in, uh, in the realty business. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what we do on the site services and site selection perspective. So, you know, the, the, these are primarily industrial. So I'm just gonna be clear. It's not so much about the smart cities and tech space, but it can be. But right now the agency is very much engaged in providing services around site selection. And there's a variety of things that we can do with sort of a discrete investor. For example, confidential site searches in conjunction with the municipalities, providing site tours, site evaluation, and also to look at coordination of permits and approvals or accelerating permits and approvals based on those strategic opportunities. So I'm not trying to take away business from Denton. I'm just trying to point out that there's an important interface for us from a site servicing and site selection perspective. And I actually believe part of the mandate of the agency is historically we've done this interface through the municipalities. I think there's a real opportunity for us to think more strategically about private sector developers and how we can engage more effectively around finding sites for investors because I would say that's our biggest disconnect and particularly in the industrial environment. You know, within our auto sector, you know, certainly through the work we're doing with OCI and Oven, I mean, they're looking for SMEs that are already working in these critical technologies as opposed to doing it in-house. They're actually, you know, and a lot of these companies have also created their, their own venture capital funds as well, where they're investing directly in these companies. So that whole model of innovation from a corporate perspective has also shifted. And that's why I really think one of Ontario's greatest selling propositions, and I know that Trevor would agree with me, is the, the kind of the robustness of our innovation ecosystem here in Ontario. The regional innovation centers that I mentioned to you, they service 6,000 unique clients every year, which creates a fabulous pipeline that can you know, end up with the next Shopify, the next Echo B, the next you know, Wattpad, you know, the next, you know, you know, large multinational Ontario company that had its start within Ontario's innovation ecosystem.